Mate, did we watch a thing this week? Yeah, we did. Hello, everybody, and welcome to We Watched a Thing. I'm Billy. I'm Topher. And this week, we watched a thing. Sure did. Is this the only thing you watched this week? No, this morning I watched a new Netflix film, uh, Private Life. I haven't even heard of that. It's good. Better than this? Well, that's already like spoilers. Oh <laughs> Yeah, I guess we're about to find out. Um, Pri- Private Life's good. Okay, I'll check it out. Check it out. What we're here to talk about this week is Bradley Cooper's directorial debut, A Star Is Born. Version 4. 6. So this is the fourth remake, and the original was actually a remake, but they changed the name. So so this is the fifth time A Star Is Born has been made, but they were based on something else as well. So technically the sixth time this film has been made. Only one that I've seen. Uh, same, same. I'm going to say that this is six too many. <laughs> I saw a, there, there was at least one like reference in this film. I was like, okay, yep, pretty sure that's a reference to, to a previous one. That I that I just get yeah. I, what reference is that? Uh, it was the kind of yellow brick road thing at the beginning when she was walking up the the yeah, ramp. Okay, yeah, because one of the films famously Judy Garland. So this version is uh, produced and directed by Bradley Cooper in his directorial debut. As we said, it's written by Cooper, Eric Roth, and Will Fetters. It stars Cooper, Lady Gaga, Andrew Dice Clay, Dave Chappelle, and Sam Elliott. And as we said, the original of this film was made in 1932. Since then, there's been 1937, 1954, 1976, and in 2013, a Bollywood remake. What's the story, Toph? Alcoholic singer gets the hots for someone who can sing, and she also becomes famous. More or less. I'd say it's a story of, say, her star rising as his falls, and there's, you know, obviously elements of jealousy there as his, as his alcoholism increases. Let's get right into it. Give us your thoughts. I think uh, like it's interesting that for like Bradley Cooper, who who is an addict himself, is he? I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. So that's um, to alcohol or drugs. Alcohol or? and drugs. Right. Yep. It, like a reformed addict or yeah. still an addict. Well, I think I'm I'm pretty sure it's accurate to say that you're always an addict. I'm pretty sure Bradley Cooper is sober. Right. Um. But yeah, these he certainly had his own struggles here, which he's been quite public about, and. I feel like, because I think there's, for, for a first time effort at directing, I think there's a lot of really good stuff here. I agree. I agree. There's some very good stuff in this film. And I feel like maybe his first film should have just been about someone dealing with addiction. It's funny you say that because to me, that's what this film is. People call this a romance and I I did not get that from the film. I thought the, the star of this performance is is. Bradley Cooper. As far as I'm concerned, he is the reason to watch this movie. Like he's the big he's the reason this movie works for me is his performance is so good. And I'm not usually a Bradley Cooper fan. This is the first time I've watched him on the screen and gone, "Hey, that's not just Bradley Cooper that I'm seeing up there." And I thought Lady Gaga was good, but to be honest, her role in this movie is really just to play off Bradley Cooper. This is not a plot-driven film. This is a character study of an alcoholic musician, as far as I'm concerned. I think that both Gaga's character and that plotline are underdeveloped. Definitely. And yep. I think that you could do a good movie with her plotline, yep. and you can do a good movie with Jackson Maine's plotline. And for me, the two don't wed I am very well. so glad to hear you say this, because this has been my thoughts about it, and I was worried that this was just me, that I was seeing this movie wrong. I thought Gaga was good in the role she did, but the role is so underdeveloped, the character is so underdeveloped. It's This, is, to me, is just a character study of Jackson Maine. I was surprised that people are surprised that Lady Gaga is any good. I was like, I, I haven't seen um, American Horror Story, but from what I understand, she's quite good in that. Well, she won, uh, didn't she won a Globe for that? Yeah, uh, and she's she'll get an Oscar for this for song, but it's but I'm like, she's a seasoned professional performer, so I find it no, I don't find it surprising at all that that no, not at all. can translate. Now, the fact that you're a great performer doesn't mean that you can create a fully fleshed out character. But I don't think this role is a fully fleshed out. Yeah, character. which yeah. and because like I think she's fine in the movie. I don't. think I agree. she's Great. Yeah, but I also don't think it's really there on the page. No, and she doesn't. It's not like her character carries a lot of the emotion in the film. All of that comes through from Jackson Maine. Her character is almost not emotionless, but it's not like she's having these huge emotional scenes or anything. It's she's she's really just there 
for him to have something to play off. <laughs> and I, to be honest, when they first met, I didn't buy that she would be into him. No. Like that first night they have <laughs> together, I was just like, dude, you're a creeper. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. He, he, like the stuff with the nose. And- I mean, I found that the whole film, I was sitting there going, why is she still with him? Yeah. This, I was like, like, why is she with him? Like once you're, once, you're in, once you're in love and everything, okay, sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're going to, you yeah, know, this is a partnership. We're going to make this work. I was just like, he's, he's came off to me as just this creepy entitled <laughs> Yeah, middle-aged white dude. And that's that's I think my biggest problem with the film. I, there are a lot of things about this film that I like, and I liked it a lot more than I expected to. But as you know, I was expecting to very much dislike it. But my biggest problem is that this film it thinks it's a romance and it, and it's not. They're both very enigmatic actors, and I guess to an extent you could say they have chemistry. But I never believe a romantic relationship between them. And the movie is so long; it's two and a half hours, and yet. Nothing really develops enough. You don't get enough time with these characters together to believe that they're falling in love. Every time you see them, he's drunk and falling down. And and she, she, her character is so underdeveloped. She seems so meek, and yet she's supposed to be this performer. It, a lot of things don't really gel there for me. Did you have the same feelings? In terms of, yeah, her story moving along. I actually, like, it's a good plot device when they have her closing out the season on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Because it's a quick way of saying, of it just informs you that that's she's where she's now huge. at. Yeah, because to to be on SNL at all is huge. So that's like that's a good bit of, of screenwriting, I think, to just go, all right, without really ramming it down your throat and treating you like an idiot, this is where she's up to. But I actually felt a bit dudded out of not seeing the journey. Yes, I agree. Because we're so focused on his journey, and even there- it's given this film is so long. There's so much you skip over. I, I was hearing about an interview with Bradley Cooper where he was saying he feels that this version of the film is different to previous ones because Jackson Maine remains a star. It's not about his star falling as hers rises. But I feel like he very much missed that in the filmmaking because after that point where she becomes a star, you don't see him perform again at all except for the corporate gig for a pharmaceutical company. And by the time you're doing that, your star has fallen. And then he's given the Grammys and he's replaced by this younger kid. So that the impression I got was that his career was waning and supposedly that's not what the intention was. Mm. I did also question, though, is that is that actually just where his career was at the start? It's hard to gauge. But he's playing, like, packed out stadiums he at the is, start of this film. But he's doing it during daylight hours, which suggests he's at a festival. His first performance with Lady Gaga is a nighttime. Not, yeah, cer- yeah, certainly. Nighttime that stadium. Yep. But that's a look, it's not a small venue by any means. But it's not it's not a stadium stadium. Yeah, okay. What's the difference between a stadium, a music bowl, and an arena? Because arena <sighs> tours are bigger than stadium tours, aren't they? Well, I don't know. I think stadium's as big as it gets, really? isn't it? Well, you're a, you're a sports nut. What well yeah, because I was gonna say in, in putting it in terms of, say, Melbourne. Yeah. Rod Laver Arena, where the Australian Open is. Yeah, yeah. That's an arena. So that that's bigger than a stadium. No. The Dockland Stadium in, in Melbourne, where they also do gigs, that is significantly bigger. Really? Than than Rod Laver Arena up the road. So I, I saw the cure at Rod Laver Arena. So you're telling me that the cure aren't big enough to book out a stadium? Wow. I'm sorry, Robert Smith, if you're listening. <laughs> but there's a big difference between popularity and quality, Robert Smith. That's true. I mean, we are we are talking like thirty years past peak cure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the fact that you're thirty years on still playing arenas is actually amazing. Yeah. Okay. You're all right, Robbie. <laughs> Good on you, Robbie. <laughs> Sidetrack. <laughs> <laughs> um, shout out to Sam Elliott, who's fucking great. Yeah, Sam Elliott is fantastic in this film. I actually think that Sam Elliott in his, and Sam Elliott's not in the film a lot. He's in a handful of scenes. Yeah. And yet I feel like his older brother character is the most rounded out character in the film. I agree 100%. I still think that Bradley Cooper really surprised me because I have not been a fan of his in the past and I was not expecting him to put out this performance. And it's interesting that you've told me now that he has had addiction issues in the past. So he was probably playing a lot off real life. But he, as far as I'm concerned, he's the almost sole reason to watch this movie. Like, because if the movie was more about- Lady Gaga's character, Ali, trying to maintain control of who she is and her image while all these white men try and control her. Yeah. And then, you know, in a film written and directed by a white 
man, her story kind of gets a bit lost. And I was like, eh. does anyone else find it kind of ironic and interesting that as Ali is transformed and, you know, supposedly becoming less of who she is, she becomes more of who we know Lady Gaga to be. Like the song she performs at SNL that Bradley Cooper is kind of deriding her about is her most Lady Gaga-ish song in the film. Yeah, I my suspicion is that that's a conscious thing. That's my yeah. suspicion. Okay. I don't know, but I think the, like for instance, the, the, I mean, the, they do throw in, you know, there's that line about the platinum blonde hair yeah. and she's like, no, you got to be, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, I've got to be me, despite the fact that that's very Lady Gaga. Yeah. Uh, so I think the film does live with an awareness of who who she of is. who she is. Yeah. Okay. I think at some point I knew, but I'd completely forgotten that Dave Chappelle was in the film. Oh, well, and then as soon as the film's over, you forget too because he's in one and a half scenes. <laughs> I was just like <laughs> speaking of cameos, though. I mean, I think we all know which star is really born, and it's Greg Grunberg. <laughs> Because as you I know, <laughs> knew you'd love that. I'm a giant Greg Grunberg fan, and I'm so glad to see him in a film that's not directed by JJ. Although, do you suspect that JJ may have mentored Bradley Cooper given the amount of lens flares in the film? Oh. The first 20 seconds, I'm like, holy shit, there's Greg Grunberg. There's another 15th lens flare. How involved was JJ in this film? But I actually thought I thought it was effective Earl, in that first scene that there's actually a point to them because yeah, you're dealing, concert, you're dealing with lighting. the literal and figurative glare. Yes. So I was like, actual good use of lens flare. Yeah. And that, that first scene, they had 10 minutes. Right. And they got, so they were only going to get one crack at it. Yeah, right. Well, I must say, so the music in well the film played. surprised me. Okay, second week in a row that I've got to call out the sound department for being great at their jobs. Yeah. The, the live music sets in the film- sound so live. Yeah, and and this has become more of a trend uh, with musicals in recent years. Les Miserables was live audio. Uh, La La Land was, I believe, mostly, if not fully, live recordings. And now this, I I believe, was fully live recordings. And my understanding is that was Lady Gaga that really pushed that. Yeah, I think she was driving that. Yeah, yeah. And, and it does really, really work. The performances are solid. The songs themselves are far better than I expected. That first so- Like, that first scene... I was like, I was I to go, to this, this is a good song. Yeah. So I think that was written by, I could be wrong about this, I think that was one that was written by Willie Nelson's son, right. Lucas, who, you know, the, the the guitarist in the band? Yeah. That's him. And he taught Cooper how to play right. over a period of time. And then his band is Jackson Maine's backing band. Right. I mean, my big concern was going in was I'm not a fan of musicals that aren't musicals. To me, if you're going to do a musical- have the songs drive the story forward rather than just show a bunch of full performances just because the characters perform. And I was really concerned about that. But luckily, the the music was so good that I didn't care that we were just seeing full performances several times throughout the film. It really worked. I can't decide whether I'm being a douche in thinking this or, or if I'm being sympathetic towards Ali that I do get kind of aggravated about the, the identity that she does take on as her career gets bigger and bigger. What do you mean by that? Well, am I just like being a bit of a dick and going, oh, God, this is lame. You should be doing it just you at a piano sort of stuff. Or is she is she genuinely being manipulated for other people's financial gain and, that's and a, I should be mad about it? Well, that's the thing that pissed me off most about the movie is she's a fully grown woman. She knows what she's doing. And that's what I was saying about, you know, when you look at this in parallel to Lady Gaga, I find it ironic then that Lady Gaga would play this character kind of deriding that lifestyle when she's lived off it for many, many years. Like, But because she couldn't cut through being just a person at a piano. Interesting. Actually, that that's another thing that I, I do get a bit sick of, the stereotype of the ugly girl that's actually quite attractive. And- she has had a career in music for like 10 years now at least. And yet we're like this whole – I find the, the whole premise of the film really old-fashioned. This this idea that she can't make it and she needs this man to kind of introduce her to the world and stuff. And I know obviously the original of this film was made in the 30s. But I just find the whole premise so old-fashioned and a little bit unbelievable because – she is a pop star, and yet we're meant to believe that she couldn't become one 
on her own. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, there is this element of, Jesus, this is the story we need in 2018. Yeah. Ali is this character that's so underdeveloped, you don't really see her pursue anything on her own. It's other people taking her and saying, let's do this, let's do this. And I don't know that that's a really good message at the moment. I just found it a little bit old fashioned, the entire premise of the film. And that's what, like, when I was talking about where I was kind of struggling with my, how I was taking it in, I was like, am I then projecting this kind of, she needs rescuing thing Yeah. when actually I'm a white guy and I should also sit down and (laughs) shut up? Yeah. Probably. I and I still I still don't know. Well, that's I, don't know, I don't know if that's a fault of the film or a fault of me. I still don't know. Yeah, I only not- watched it yesterday and I haven't decided yet if it's a fault in the film or I'm a dick. No, I'm the same. I still- I saw it two days ago now and I still haven't been able to really process how did I actually feel about this movie? And I've spoken about this movie a lot. I was having a conversation with a friend who has seen most of the previous films and is a big fan of at least one of them. And they loved this film a lot more than I did. And I don't know whether it's just because they're projecting their memories of those films upon it, or whether it's that I am not familiar enough with the story to appreciate it on that level. But yeah, so I'm I'm really interested that you felt similar to how I did. On the other hand, I like it when I'm not sure about a film. Me too. And a day later, I'm still not totally sure about this film. Yeah, look, and, and I have been, and I've I've been thinking about it for a day now, which that's great. Same. I've been thinking about it a lot. And there are a lot of good things about it. The performances are extremely solid. The music is great. The direction and editing is really, really good. There's a lot of good things about the film, but I'm not sure how much I enjoyed the experience. Mm. So let's talk about the ending. Obviously, I'm famously a crier. Did not shed a tear in this film, which people have been surprised about. I was sitting there going- Billy must have cried. I didn't feel emotionally connected enough to any of the characters to really care at that moment. How did you feel at the end of the film? I was, um, I mean, I'm famously a robot, an unfeeling robot. I was I was somewhat moved. Yeah? Yep. Okay. It, it, it won't shock you to hear that I wasn't crying. No, that doesn't <laughs> shock me. <laughs> at which moment would you say you were moved? Was it was it when he did the did the deed, or was it afterwards at her performance, or uh, when was it that you really got prob- hit? Probably just that three minute chunk when he was in the car, and then when yeah, and then you've yeah. got the co- a really good scene actually, I think, between Sam Elliott and Lady Gaga, um, when he's saying it's not your fault, it's yeah. yeah. Although I don't agree with him when he's saying it's he's like it's Jackson's fault. I'm like, no, Jackson was sick. Well, and Jackson was clearly sick from a very young age. Yeah. Jackson was raised an alcoholic by his father. He he said that he tried to kill himself when he was 12 years old. Yeah. You know? Doesn't Jackson's old man sound like a creeper? Yeah. He was, what was he, 63 when he knocked up an 18-year-old? Yeah. I yeah. was like, oh, no wonder Jackson's a bit of a creeper. <laughs> yeah. Like the apple could have fallen some way from the tree and still, and still be, be a creeper. creeper. Yeah. <laughs> Just went and knocked up some farm girl. Jackson's dad was a dick. Um, oh, also following it, something that that I was like, oh, speaking of as we did last week, speaking of emotionally detached males, yeah. My favorite moment of the film is when Sam Elliott drops Jackson off after he's got out of rehab. Jackson says, "It was you that I idolized, not Dad." Yeah. And the shot of Sam Elliott reversing out of the driveway. Because he's like, oh, my God, I need to get out of here before I show any human emotion. Yeah. Sam Elliott, f- fucking amazing. Yeah. I think he was a standout performance. Do you think he could get a supporting actor nom? I would have him honestly in pole position from what I've seen so far. Yeah. Same. At the moment, my my two Oscar locks at the moment. So I suppose not locks because it's way too early. <laughs> yeah. But the two that I'd be penciling in right now is Lady Gaga's getting an Oscar for song. Yeah. And Sam Elliott for supporting actor. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that Gaga and, and Cooper are both getting nominations for this. I wouldn't have Gaga win. Um, for what I understand, and hooray for tangents. Apparently, Olivia Coleman in the favorite, which Jesus Christ, I'm looking forward to that film. Apparently, Coleman is phenomenal. Do you think that this film marks the start really of Oscar season? Because after this, we've got Bohemian Rhapsody coming out, which I think is gearing for some Oscars. We've got- yeah, From the trailer, I don't think it's going to get any. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's hoping for them. Uh, Historical period piece, musical industry, it's hoping for Oscars. And I'm curious to see it. 
I honestly have you seen a trailer for it? I saw my first trailer when I saw yeah. this. Actually. To me, it looks like an excuse. It's a story that's an excuse to play Queen songs. That film is what it looks like to me from the trailer. I'm really curious. We'll get that in a couple of weeks. I hope it's so. good. But I hope just- it's good. I certainly think that um, Malik looks like he's doing a good job. But I guess it's hard to say from a two minute trailer. Yeah. So <laughs> all I know is that I just hope we get more Greg Grunberg in the world. <laughs> I hope the world needs more of, <laughs> of the Grunberg. I was I was actually disappointed that we didn't get more of him. Like, you know, he he had a couple of big scenes early on. I was like, yes, this is going to be a, a Grunberg character study. And then his character kind of peters off. And there are some other characters who pop up who I'm like- The star that should that be born. That could have just been The Grunberg. star that should be born, Craig Grunberg. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> well, I'm really- I, I'm actually shocked that we felt the same way about this. I thought you were going to be a couple of steps above me, but what are you scoring it? I'm a five out of ten. A five? That's lower than I thought. Like, I don't dislike the film. And and like I said, I do feel like I'm still processing it. Yeah. I may change from a five. There's a lot in the film that is much, much better than a five. Well, that's but- my thing. I'm going with a six purely on the basis of those things that were exceptional. And there were a couple of exceptional things. There are. But to me, the film as a whole doesn't work. It's too long and yet much of it is underdeveloped. There's a bunch of things- plot-wise, that I don't really see working and that I feel are a bit old-fashioned, but there are enough going for me that it is a recommend from me. I'm going with a six. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm saying, five, yeah, five out of ten. Like, I don't dislike it. I don't particularly like it. Having said that, I'm I'm all for more films by Bradley Cooper and I'm all for more films with Lady Gaga. Yep. There's a bunch about the film that I think is good that just doesn't come together and for And definitely me. keen for more films with Greg Grunberg. As always. Anyone who wants to cast Greg Grunberg, just- even if you're on the edge of you thinking, oh, maybe this Grunberg fellow, give him a go because he clearly knows what he's doing. He can drive. He can he can drive. He can speak. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a very recognisable voice. I don't know if it's just because I'm a big Grunberg fan. I knew it was him well before because they they did this kind of special reveal with him where you didn't yeah, see his face. That's not a special. Like if it was Matt Damon, <laughs> then yes, that's a special reveal. <laughs> I must say, though, one thing I did not like about that Grunberg scene is the extreme overshadowing of that shot with Bradley Cooper in the nooses. Overshadowing. Because, like, first, what is that an advertisement for? Why is there nooses. a billboard for <laughs> nooses on it? Sometimes and- you need new nooses, Billy. <laughs> Head on down to Noose King for all your noosey needs. Nooses yeah. are us. That was too much for me because you were just like, all right, well, well we know where this dead. is going. Yeah. <laughs> Five yeah. minutes in and- Yep. It's for sure. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, this was a fun discussion. What are we getting to next week? No fucking idea. Oh, you've forgotten? Yeah. We're going back to horror, my friend, because it's Halloween. It's remake time. And so no, we're no, watching Halloween. Time. It's a sequel, isn't it? It is a sequel. Yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis is back, my friend. Yep. I saw a trailer the other day, actually, and I was like, Jamie Lee Curtis looks like she's having a lot of fun. I actually have not seen any trailers, but I'm I'm betting it's going to be good. I bet it's absolute <laughs> garbage. <laughs> maybe this is one that we should try see together then. I'd be up for that. Yeah. Maybe we should look into that schedule-wise. <laughs> All righty. Well, in the meantime, if you want to get in touch with us, you can do that at wewatchedathing.com or at wewatchedathing at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all under the handle at We Watch the Thing. If you want to help support the show, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash We Watch the Thing. And until next time, go watch a movie. Go watch A Star is Born because most people like it more than us. And yeah. Th- when we're pretty dumb. <laughs> <laughs> let us know what you think. Let us know what you think. And then let three friends know what you think of our show and then Jesus. let them tell three friends because it's not a scheme. It just helps us. It's the algorithm. If it sounds like a scheme, looks like a scheme. <laughs> Catch us. And how you all doing? Strange, I've done, I've done strange to ask people that question, isn't it? When <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to We Watched a Thing. It's your boy, Billy. Are you people's boy? Is that a thing? <laughs> Are you Let me do this again. Hello, everybody, and welcome to We Watched a Thing. And we're... <coughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Billy. I'm no, t- oh, fuck. Okay, this is going to be the last one.